What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjulu here with another team review. Probably one of the last ones for a while uh, before I start talking about some other stuff, but it's important. We talk about the Power Armor team now. So, Power Armor originally tagged Stark Industries, which is why there's no actual symbol, so I'm using that one here. Uh, Power Armor is a very fun team, but it's one of those two-turn combo teams. Uh, it doesn't really progress you meaningfully as a team, but individual characters are useful uh, in certain things. Uh, they're predominantly a war team, so real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the newest version of Power Armor, Power Armor 2.0, but we're going to address the original version of the team with Vision in this, so you can kind of get an understanding of which version of the team you can use. The answer is both of them. Obviously, the new version of the team is superior, but it doesn't mean that using Vision on this team wouldn't be. So taking a quick look at this team, let's go into a Blitz fight doesn't really matter who you fight they're gonna win and talk about the availability of these characters and when you should start working on them so the power armor team is weirdly available like you can pretty much get all the characters, with the exception of course of Ironheart who's a brand new character uh, and probably not gonna be farmable for a decent time uh, most of the team is incredibly available Falcon is available a uh, little bit earlier than most of the other characters as a node farm. Rescue is available as a blitz or bonus character right now, as well as a very late game node farm. By the time you actually get to her node, you've probably unlocked her or gotten her a pretty decent investment just from opus and blitz orbs. Vision is an incredibly difficult farm to get to. He requires you to defeat Mystic 3-9. Uh, which is not an easy fight if you've ever done it. It becomes easier now with the number of characters that have come out since its original release, but still, Vision is a character you might accidentally unlock from random orbs. He's only a 45 shard unlock. Uh, War Machine is available in the raid store, and not necessarily a target farm, but as you open raid orbs, you may get him. And Iron Man is a 3 star unlock uh, gated behind shield characters obviously that includes the shield minions as well as a handful of named characters like captain america hawkeye quake black widow uh, basically you're going to accidentally unlock iron man as time progresses uh, the only other thing to mention about their availability is they're kind of sparing in when you can unlock them i can tell you from my free-to-play account i just happen to unlock the entire team and the one thing that works great about them is no matter what power level they are when you unlock them, they start functioning as a team relatively quickly. Let's take a quick look at them and figure out where their usability is. So, the Power Armor team is widely regarded as, first and foremost, a war offense team. A lot of that comes from the fact that they have tags that say, in war or in war offense. And the way they work on AI is counterintuitive to the way they work when you control them. A lot of them don't necessarily take the actions you need and while they are a very good two turn combo team or one and a half turns based on their speed manipulation, they do function better as a uh, beat em up team that you have control over. For a long time Power Armor used to be the hard answer to Ultron teams in war and there's a little bit of overlap. Very few teams can stand to a strong power armor team. They're very capable of punching up in a lot of matchups, and with the inclusion of Ironheart, they've just gotten a little bit more certain. Now, previously, War Machine uh, was a little bit slower than he is now. They actually updated his speed a bit, which devalued Vision on the team, in that Vision no longer buff clears with his ult before War Machine ults, which is why Ironheart's a little bit better now but vision doesn't necessarily do nothing anymore he still spawns the entire team with defense up as well as offering a turn one ability block which can be very meaningful the earlier you get this team you're really not going to find much use for them individual characters like vision and falcon are incredibly useful iron man is a good character early but he kind of falls off as you start entering the, the late mid-game, which is a made-up word that I just used right now. And War Machine, while strong, really needs the benefit of not just his team, but a team of hero characters 
to maximize the damage they do. They are useful in Arena to some extent, actually. A full power armor team can definitely be a parody fight in Arena, especially because a lot of the buffs that show up in things like War aren't there, but they're also very good modularly. Uh, so while I wouldn't necessarily advocate for them as an Arena defense team, if you do have them and you're just trying to beat a fight that you're not quite sure about, giving the power armor a chance might be beneficial. Like I said, they are a two turn combo team. They don't really have sustain, so you wouldn't use them necessarily in raids, and you wouldn't necessarily use them for something like Dark Dimension. Uh, but having the option to use the independent characters might be beneficial to you overall. Another interesting thing about the Power Armor team is, much like I've been talking about previously about Holy Trinities of teams, this team doesn't need many characters uh, at high impact. As you can see, my rescue is incredibly low investment because rescue's only job is to uh, put buffs on other people. She doesn't actually do damage. She just makes other people survivable. So the, the stronger your rescue is, the more likely she is to survive. And that's the trick. Now, I, in general, take the chance of uh, them not necessarily killing my rescue on turn one, since there's plenty of other targets they can hit. Uh, and it's been working for me forever. But I'm also being a little bit greedy. I would always recommend, you know, you're balancing your teams out. With one exception, the stronger your war machine is, the, the more likely this team is to win. Uh, both with the Vision Hybrid or the Ironheart full team, you'll notice as you use the Power Armor team that every character on the team is expendable, but if War Machine dies, you pretty much immediately lose the fight. Because of that, I always feel like having a stronger War Machine on your Power Armor team is the most important member or the most important thing you can do because his ult is really what's going to make the difference between winning a fight and losing a fight. With Ironheart and her defense down, uh, his ult becomes stronger just as it is, so you don't have to worry too much about how that works. But still, I've always found success in not only myself, but advocating to other people. Keep your War Machine stronger than everybody else. Everyone else can be about 10 to 20k lower, depending on the scale. If, you know, if they're all 20k and he's 30k, that team's going to be just fine. They don't need to be perfectly balanced. As a matter of fact, in a lot of fights, uh, having a stronger War Machine, maybe mostly in Blitz, really does help your, uh, your two-turn combo go off without a hitch. So as far as usability is concerned, they exclusively are a War Offense team. And as a result of that, it's really hard to like quantify them in other game modes. But let's talk about that in their realm. There's no reason to worry about this is the investment you need for that. Let's talk about this team as a War Offense team when we go through breakpoints and determine what you need them to be in order to beat the teams you want to use. So, we will start in breakpoints with Rescue, the worst or second worst member of the Power Armor team. Uh, as far as Tier 4s are concerned, uh, the only major increase she gets from Tier 4 in her special is Health and Barrier. This is a great investment. Keep in mind you are only using this team once because it's War Offense specifically. Uh, but if you do try to hybrid out the team, you might or maybe take off a character like Falcon and replace it. Uh, any kind of weird mishmash you want to do, you could get some value out of using Rescue and some of the other Power Armor characters on defense. Wouldn't recommend it. It's possible. My job is to tell you what's possible, right? So this isn't a Tier 4 that I think is required by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it will help survivability on other characters, so if you do want to make sure your other characters are weaker, uh, this will give them a little bit extra strength, a little bit extra barrier, but ultimately nothing else there. Firewall uh, clears all negative effects instead of four. I can tell you in all certainty that the Power Armor team is fast enough to never really worry about how many negative effects they have on themselves. Four is more than adequate, especially because it's self and all allies. The only benefit to being on the Power Armor team here is offense up to self and Power Armor allies for two turns. Uh, in war, they all get immunity, whatever. No big deal, but uh, it basically sets up their combo turn. So I don't think this is a tier four that's even close, unless you're trying to use her in some kind of weird kitschy raid team or something as a, a buff clear because you don't want to use Scientist Supreme. I don't know. It's possible. Uh, tech Shield. 
Uh, this is going to happen pretty much immediately on turn one every time. Barrier all allies for a decent chunk. Apply regeneration to all allies in War Reply 2. Uh, they get slightly more barrier. Again, if you want her barrier to be higher, just invest more in her. I don't think this tier 4... I think getting her up to, you know, tier 11 or 12 will pretty much cover the gap between the two, so I wouldn't worry too greatly about this tier 4. Turns out I don't think Rescue requires any tier 4s, and you'll see why when we talk about her basic. It's 20% damage. If you're using this attack, it's because War Machine's ult didn't clear the entire fight. This attack will not be killing anybody. It's very similar to uh, Quake's basic. It does apply slows. Very infrequently you'll be using this first. Uh, and if you do use it, something probably went wrong somewhere. But even then, tier 4-ing, total waste. So I wouldn't put a single tier 4 in rescue uh, if you expect to get wins with her. I don't think you need them. Stark upgrade being the only one that's close to a requirement. And even then, it's more of a novelty win more investment. Keep in mind, this is my rescue. Level 60, gear tier 9. And I don't really fear for anything when I go into fights with my power armor team. That's just me. Uh, next, we'll move into Falcon. Falcon is one of the few characters on this team that has incredible value outside of the team itself. Uh, and we'll talk about why in a second. So Exo Wingsuit, he's got a huge block chance. He goes up to about 45% block chance. I think it goes to 50 base uh, on the power armor team, which means he's a little bit more survivable than his stats would lead him to believe. Uh, he gains 10% max health and 5% block amount. Uh, increasing the block amount is great. Uh, it's great if you think you're fighting in fights where he dies quickly because he's not blocking enough. But again, don't think this is going to get you too much value over the course of your play. Uh, strafing run. Attack all enemies for 160 damage plus 50% piercing. For each positive effect on an enemy, bonus attack that enemy for more. Now, it reads a little bit weird, so let me explain. If every single enemy has one buff, uh, this will attack one extra each of them one extra time. If there's a different number of buffs, they will take a different amount of damage. Um, and you'll see that sometimes characters with a lot of heal stacks take a lot of damage. You know, if that if that's just how the line worked out, or if you're fighting against uh, Marauders team where they do tend to throw out random buffs that aren't defense up. So Power Armor is really good at beating up on Marauders, which is one of the reasons why I, I rarely advocate for putting Ultron on that team, since Power Armor is also really good. By the time he does this strafing run, it's going to do a ton of damage and clean up after a War Machine ult. Noting that on War Offense, he does slightly more piercing damage, not only on his main attack, but on the other. Now, if you tier 4 it, it's more damage. Since uh, this is part of the team and since this attack is meaningful, and he is a pretty decent damage dealer on the team. You can go ahead and invest in this. I've never found it necessary, but one day I might, and I wouldn't regret this kind of investment. Moving to the main reason Falcon is a phenomenal character, we go into Red Wing. Red Wing fills speed bar for self and all allies by 25%, plus 10% for each enemy with a positive effect. Unlike his ultimate, if the enemy has 5 or 1 positive effect on them, it's still only 10%. So... At its core, this ability can only ever, on a random fight, buff the entire team speed by 75%. Obviously, in a raid fight or in a arena fight, if there are summons, it could theoretically buff it by more. The most important thing to note about the speed meter is it's additive, not completion. So if you do this and you get a thousand speed meter, not only does it fill your current bar, but it fills the next stage of the bar. Very similar to how Black Panther's ult will work. If Black Panther kills multiple characters, he gets multiple turns. Same thing with this. Also, it happens to clear stealth from all enemies, which is phenomenal. Uh, as far as the tier fours, I know plenty of people who've done it. Uh, that extra 5% base speed can matter. It's relevant. Uh, I, think, I don't think it's as relevant for war, uh, but I do think if you're using Falcon as an independent character on a team, like maybe for U7, or in Arena, I think that benefit is a little bit more. It really comes down to timing and when characters are supposed to go, so it's a weird investment to make if you're not sure how much you're supposed to be getting or if your characters are supposed to take actions before an enemy, but that's unrelated. I think this is a fine tier 4 investment, but I don't think it's anywhere near mandatory. Uh, and dual SMGs is kind of like his ult, but a little bit weaker. Attack primary target, 
If primary target has any positive effects, bonus attack for decent chunk of damage. In war, bonus attack again. So in war, you'll get basically three attacks. I don't know if you've ever used this ability, but it doesn't seem like those bonus attacks actually matter. So much so that I wouldn't even consider putting it in this. This is not, again, the attack that uh, makes Falcon amazing. This is just a bonus uh, fun thing that he does. Kind of to clean up in case the War Machine ult didn't kill anybody. All in all, Falcon is probably the most usable outside of the Power Armor team, so I wouldn't necessarily regret much investment in him. But that said, Red Wing itself is why he's the most usable, so a lot of these other abilities and gear and everything doesn't really make too much of a difference. I know some people that use him for the global nodes of Dark Dimension 3. Maybe that's a great place to have him, maybe even in Dark Dimension 2, but for me, it's not quite worth it. Your mileage may vary. Uh, and then we can move to Ironheart. She's brand new. Plenty of people have talked about her kit, but I'm just going to go over real quick uh, the investments that I think. Now, I recently just got a four star from Blitz. Thanks, Blitz. So I haven't had too much time to invest in her, but eventually we'll get a little bit more. First thing I invested in was Prodigy. So just as a record, uh, on spawn, apply defense up to self and all power armies for two turns. So she replaces Vision's core, uh, which is why she can go one for one. They gain resist. They gain max health. Uh, the tier four investment increases the amount of resist, max health, and armor. Armor is kind of a little bit of a dump stat right now. It doesn't actually matter too much. But I felt like uh, what I was losing from Vision, I would regain from this setup. Uh, and I thought it was worth it. I don't know it was, but I figured I'd rather just make sure the team is as survivable as it can be without, of course, working on rescue, whom I hate dramatically. So I don't know if this is absolutely worth it. Uh, we'll let my testing determine in the future, but I don't think it was detrimental. Uh, I think that a little bit extra health and armor, it's kind of like uh, what rescues passive does except significantly better and then i don't have to work on rescue but that's pretty much it uh heartbreaker is her big uh defense down attack damage thing. now one thing i will note is it attacks the enemies first and then it applies defense down which is kind of how you set up for war machines ult uh the extra focus that it now correctly gives is relevant uh, the, i do think that this is an incredibly important upgrade because i do think two turns of defense down will help you just in case you can't full clear the team with uh, the War Machine ult, and it will make it a little bit more confident. In theory, you won't need it. The team will be dead when War Machine actually ults, but in practice, uh, this is kind of a catch-all, and it will never be uh, irrelevant. It'll only ever be, nah, maybe it was a little bit win more. So I think this is a very important Tier 4 investment, uh, but I would test the team out first before finding out if you need the two defense downs and let your uh, experience determine it for you. Uh, deploy flares. This is her turn one attack. Ready primary and adjacent targets. Cool. Reduce speed bar of primary. Sure, apply ability block. So basically take Vision's kit and make it in her, but also have her bonuses uh, apply to the entire team. Now we have a pretty decent ability block, except it's only one target. Whatever. The direction of speed bar is very relevant, considering the fact that you're about to take some extra turns, uh, but it is only uh, for primary and adjacent so sometimes it gains and loses the damage does not matter on this attack but that extra five percent speed bar again that depends on how many of the targets you're going to hit and if they're relevant targets if you're going into a fight that has like for example we use marauders and strife is taunting on turn one that reduction of speed bar might not matter too much the ability block might not matter too much it depends on what you're doing um ultimately if you do hit an ultron with it though it's going to be great so you should be fine. Uh, I don't think this is worth tier fours compared to the other ones, but reducing speed bar is always good, so I wouldn't necessarily regret it if I did. Prototype Repulsors is actually a pretty decent targeted attack, especially if Iron Man's still alive. You get to do a pretty decent chunk of damage. I don't think tier fours are necessary because you get the assist on this, but if you find that you need a little bit of extra juice in order to complete it, this is here for that. She's not the primary damage dealer of the team. She's a pretty adequate or mediocre damage dealer on the team but with offense up it might make a difference uh, i don't think anything other than heartbreaker is necessary uh, and the only reason i haven't upgraded it yet is because i am not level 70 on her yet i will be and this will be upgraded but prodigy was an investment that i was able to do the second i unlocked her and 
I don't necessarily regret that either. Giving them a little bit more survivability has helped, especially when Falcon refuses to block or my rescue gets targeted. Uh, moving to the next character is Iron Man. Iron Man, I'm just going to say this right now, he doesn't require anything. He's kind of there as a passive, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, the crit chance is good, but 10 to 15%. Eh, whatever. He's here to put the death proofs on him and War Machine. That's pretty much why he's here. Uh, but the, the extra crit chance is pretty good. Uh, the extra you know, damage per power armor ally is great because he's on the team, but he really doesn't do much. Uh, Unibeam is a single target, pretty big chunky damage, so it's pretty cool. Ultimately, this is probably going to kill whoever it hits because by the time he's capable of doing it, he's going to have offense up. Don't think you need it. Rocket Barrage, this is going to be kind of a strange one. Uh, sometimes you do this on turn one and you're like, yay, and sometimes you save it to clean up after an ult. Either way, it's fine. Obviously, you don't have Captain America on the Power Armor team, and I don't think that the 20 and 30% extra damage is going to be meaningful, especially since, again, Captain America is not on the team. You'll be fine. Uh, Repulsor Blast, again, just damage. It will increase the amount of damage he does when he's called for an assist from Ironheart, but none of these Tier 4s are necessary. As a matter of fact, Iron Man himself doesn't actually have to be as invested in as even mine is. Uh, he's literally a walking passive for the entire team, the amount of damage he does is incidental at best, even at high investment, and the amount of investment you have to put in to make that relevant is a little bit more than I would recommend putting in any character for any reason. And if you're choosing power armor, those investments would way be better served on other characters. Now we go into Vision, the option if you don't have Ironheart. Uh, very simple. Vision has some good tier 4s, but none of them are required for his team. Density manipulation increases his dodge chance. Spawning gives defense up to him and all tech allies for two turns. That's it. Like, it's really great. You can use it on the team to make them just a little bit more survivable. His dodge chance is cute, but not necessary. No need to invest in this. Solar Beam. It doesn't do much damage to begin with, so boosting the damage doesn't matter. It only clears two positive effects. Meh. And obviously, Scar Witch ain't on the team, so we don't have to, have to read this text. But if you are using him outside of it, and you are using with Scarlet Witch, this could be great. It's not. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, dive Bomb is a pretty mediocre attack. The major reason it's relevant is it applies ability block to two total targets, the primary and one adjacent. The damage, again, a little bit lackluster, and the percentages don't make it better. It's almost, uh, I won't say wasted, but these would have to be closer to 40% on both attacks in order for me to even consider it. It doesn't increase it by enough, and it's already pretty meh to begin with. Uh, heavy Hitter, however... Uh, this is one of those attacks that many people upgrade just because of what it does. So attack primary target for a decent chunk, guaranteed chain to one target. Apply offense down to each target, apply bleed against each tech enemy. This uh, guarantees the chain to two targets and increases the damage by a huge chunk. Uh, also this attack sometimes is better than any of his other attacks. And if a fight in power armor goes off, uh, having him able to hit whoever happens to be left over or chain into multiple can be the difference between winning and losing, especially with that offense down application. So this is a tier four that I would recommend for him if you feel the need to. It's just good all around. It's good if you use him on any team, even if you use him on the BKT as a hybrid if you don't want to use Thanos. Uh, this is a phenomenal attack and a phenomenal tier four upgrade. You notice I haven't done it, and a lot of reason why is because I don't use my vision nearly enough. Uh, I don't even need it on the power armor, and now I definitely don't need it because I have Ironheart. But if you do, it'll be great. It won't be a regretful one. I promise I'll upgrade this once Tier 4 ability materials become as frequent as Tier 3 ability materials for players of my level. Uh, and the final character on this team is the, the bread and butter, the prince, the king himself, War Machine. And War Machine is dope, and I love War Machine. That said... War Machine doesn't actually need anything. He just gets better the more you put in it. He's already great on this team. The more you put into him, he just does more damage. So starting with integrated targeting, uh, he gains a hard number of damage, gain 5% piercing. When an enemy drops below 50% health, 50% chance to apply taunt. Uh, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this ability. Some people are like, you gotta do it. Some people are like, eh, I don't know. For me, I don't want that taunt to come up, so I'd rather take the chance of it not applying. Because a lot of times when that taunt does happen, it kind of ruins who I wanted to target because the team does so much AoE. I, I'd rather not. 
uh, especially if the taunt does apply to one character but doesn't apply to another um i don't know some i've heard both ways for me i've never needed to i don't remember the last time this has actually hurt me but your mileage may vary and if iron man is an ally gain 20 percent crit damage gain death proof and grant death proof to iron man in war he gains 20 percent damage that's it this guy is the the heart and soul of the team he does the damage uh, oh, he gains a little bit more crit if you tier 4, and he gains a little bit more damage. Like, this is a totally worthwhile investment in him. I haven't needed it. Doesn't mean that it's not good. Your mileage may vary. And one of the reasons why I haven't needed it is because I've invested so much gear into my War Machine that the extra damage didn't matter, but it might as time goes on. Uh, Cluster Bombs attacks all enemies for 30% damage. Da uh, 310% damage. Damage is increased by 30% per hero ally. Uh, the tier 4 investment goes from 310 to 330, which functionally just acts like there's another hero. Uh, I invested in this because since most of the fight revolves around this ult killing somebody, even though 30% damage isn't much overall, this attack is the thing that has to kill as many characters as it can, so I want this to be the strongest one. This attack also cannot be missed, but of course it can be dodged. Duh. So... If you are interested in building the Power Armor team very similar to how I have, I had no regrets putting it in this investment. When Y War Machine ults, uh, everybody dies, and if they don't, they're so, so close to dead that the basics that come up after him will be good enough. But not necessary. In my head, it's just if this is the attack that needs to kill everybody, I want it as strong as humanly possible. Uh, Oop, that's not the right attack. Missile systems. Attack primary adjacent targets two to three times for 80%. If Iron Man is now, I attack one additional time. Uh, if you tier for it, goes to 90%, and it always attacks three or four times. Great ability. Again, damage dealer. So why not make it do more damage? Uh, I've never needed it, but I could totally understand it. If you only ended up putting tier fours, if you only had a handful of tier fours to spend on this team to begin with, War Machine definitely benefits the most from all of them. Uh, I would maybe, War Machine, Ironheart, maybe together have four really good investments. If those are the only ones you put tier fours in, your team will probably be adequate enough to accomplish pretty much any war fight you want with a handful of exceptions. Uh, Railgun, of course, being as basic. You actually use this basic a lot, um, surprisingly. A lot of times you don't necessarily want to use his special because it's not going to do as much in the opening stage of the game as it will later after you've cleared off a bunch of people and still have an offense up. It's a very good cleanup attack. That said, it does uh, attack multiple targets for a decent chunk of damage and apply offense down. Uh, no incentive to invest in that tier 4 at all. 20% doesn't really matter, uh, even on him, especially because that attack is... The number just really isn't there. If this was 20% on top of 500, maybe it makes a difference. But on top of 120, not too much. Um, that's pretty much it as far as the characters and where their tier 4s lie. Breakpoints for this team are actually very simple. Um, they do follow the standard 50 rule. The team at 50k is going to be actually really good at beating and punching up a little bit. Uh, we know where they're all 10k or so. Any version, Ironheart or Vision, obviously Ironheart for the argument will always be the better option, but not everyone will have Ironheart immediately. Uh, if you, either way, about 50k, this team will be really good at clearing up like 70, 80k teams in war. Uh, at about 100 to 150k, this team begins uh, a great deal of punch up capability, probably capable of punching up. Uh, I don't know, I'd say somewhere in the 50k range from any of those steps to higher. Uh, 100k could probably beat a 150k team. Uh, I will say avoid Hydra right now. I think this team with Ironheart was originally designed to beat them, but something fell through. Uh, that said, Ironheart still improves the quality of the team and how well they do against teams like Asgardians. Um, but this team really shines very specifically at around 200k. Once every character on the team is about 40k, that usually implies that all the investments are where they need to be. They're maybe a little bit stronger than gear tier 10, maybe 67, 68, 70. They got a, a couple of tier 4s in them. Now this team is capable of punching up very dramatically. I can say around 200k, 
your team is uh, so quick uh, and so reliable that you're going to probably be able to punch up easily 100k without looking, sometimes even more depending on the fight you take. So this is one of those teams that even though it only has one use, it's just like the Fantastic Four, really, really, really good at that one thing. When it comes to when I would invest in them, this kind of represents a team that I would just slowly over time put a little bit more into. And the main reason why is they're all tech characters. There's a lot of good tech characters in the game. And this team doesn't need much to be good. So for my money, if this is one of the teams that you work on, work on them when you really need to start countering teams in war. This is one of those teams that... When you see start seeing Ultrons in your war fight, like after you get Ultron, usually it implies other people around your power level might also be getting Ultrons. So this is a team that really gets stronger as time progresses. Um, but you're never going to regret them because they will always be good for a war win. Just be a little bit more discerning of how much. But 200k is pretty accurate for where I would invest in this team and feel very comfortable about their ability to win fights. Everything after 200k, you just kind of close the gap between the harder fights you can go into. Because of that, I'm willing to give this team... I wish I could give it a rating based on how good certain characters is. Like how good Vision is, how good Falcon is. But this is a team rating. And because of that, this is a B team. The entire team in its complete form either the vision or the iron heart build still will only ever be useful in one and a half game modes um it will be useful in arena for a time but it's only good on war offense um so and i mean i guess technically it would only be one because it's really only good on arena offense and only depending on you know what your investment is and where you are in arena, like once you get to uh, very late stage arena fights, you probably couldn't bring in a power armor team to beat up some of the more comically meta teams like uh, Black Order or Sinister with uh, the Inhumans or Phoenix. Like, it just doesn't really line up very well against them. Uh, that said, as far as B teams go, um, they're a great option, but just really think about it from a priority perspective if you like the characters and you want to invest in them great you're gonna have a really strong war offense team but with the exception of maybe two of them there's no real overlap and the two that you do invest in which are falcon and vision one of them falls off that team quickly and the other one doesn't need much in terms of gear and stats in order to be good it's really just his special so they're a fun team i enjoy using this team but when it comes to how often you're going to use them it's not often enough, even three times a week in war, not often enough to justify it when you have things like Raid and Dark Dimension and all the other stuff to consider. I think this team is B at overall, but feel free to comment below, let me know. Uh, if you have any fun little hybrid teams that you use, also feel free to throw in. If you throw in Cap on the team instead of uh, Rescue because you think it's funny or Vision, let me know. Also, if you have Ironheart, let me know you know, how much better or worse this team feels than its original version if you have that experience. Other than that, I'm pretty sure I'm done here, so I want you guys to have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.